Hey there it's me Eden, if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to my channel and visit my Patreon page for early access, link in the description. Anita smiled widely at this confirmation of her opinion about my legs. I shuffled on my seat and looked out of the window for the rest of the journey. We arrived at the city terminus about ten minutes later and Anita helped the young woman off the train. She set a buggy up on the platform, and I handed down the little girl for her. You go for it girl, she said to me in parting. You never know when the next opportunity will come along. Anita and I let her disappear into the distance, and then slowly walked along the platform. Ours was a little side platform here, the big ones took the intercity trains up to London, while ours was a little suburban branch line. She was a bit interfering. I complained. No she wasn't, replied Anita. She was just trying to be helpful. We walked through onto the concourse, and then out of the station into the streets. They were quite busy, but by now I had more or less got used to the idea that I was unlikely to attract undue attention. Anita took my arm, and we walked off to a little square just off one of the main streets with a little fountain and a few seats. There was one old man on one of the seats eating sandwiches and throwing occasional crumbs to the pigeons. Anita sat down on one of the vacant benches and tapped the space next to her. Come on then, we'd best have this conversation we've been putting off. I sat down next to her as she requested carefully smoothing my skirt down as I did so. The last thing I wanted at this moment was a lecture on showing my knickers. Right, she said. Why do you think we keep kissing each other then? Her voice was quiet, so the old man did not die of shock I supposed. Even in the city, he did not look the sort of person who would take well to the idea of two schoolgirls kissing each other. I, that is, I don't know. I responded, stuttering. I had expected Anita to come up with some revelation about our relationship rather than ask me questions about it. I mean, I do like you, she went on. I always have, and now with you helping so much with the contest and things, well, I suppose I've noticed it more, she stopped, and looked at me to see if I was going to add any words of wisdom. Well I like you too, was all I could manage. She looked at me hard and long. But I like John as well, she said, pinning me with her gaze. The disappointment must have been obvious on my face. Well I do, she reiterated. I've never said otherwise have I? I shook my head in reply. And it makes me feel really guilty when I kiss you, like I'm too timing him or something. Her eyes did not leave mine for a second and I could see the concern on her face. I wish you wouldn't look so sad about it. I tore my face away for a moment. If only she knew how sad I was. And the contest makes it even more complicated, she went on. There was a pause. Gathering myself to make sure my voice worked, I managed to reply. In what way? Well because you look like a girl, silly, she replied. It's kind of exciting I suppose, kissing you when you're dressed like that, but sometimes it makes me feel, I don't know, a bit kinky I suppose. I thought about this, and particularly her insistence that I kept practicing. Then why didn't you let me dress as a boy today? Because I want you to practice, she replied instantly. This contest is important to me, you know that don't you? Yes. I mumbled. There was an awkward pause, and we both looked down at our knees, mine wearing tights and showing under the black school skirt, and hers in the regulation school black trousers. Well what do you think, she asked eventually. Well I like you Anita, I said at length. And I like kissing you, it's good. But doesn't it make you feel kinky as well, she asked. No, I responded quietly. I like it. She looked at me with some concern. You like dressing up as a girl? No, I replied quickly. Not that. I mean I like kissing you. 
She let this register, and looking into the middle distance said, Well, I suppose if we both like it, there's no reason to stop is there? I looked at her in amazement. She was giving me permission to keep on kissing her. This was a dream come true. Then she looked away. But there's other complications as well, she said, wistfully. What? I promised not to tell you. I waited a moment then said. Tell me what? She looked back at me. Well there's somebody else who fancies you as well. Who? I demanded. I can't tell you, she replied, looking away again. I promised not to. I thought long and hard about who it might be. Sue. I asked. No, she replied dismissively, not Sue. How could you think that? The girl who fancies you isn't in our year. I thought about this for a moment. I was so besotted with Anita, I rarely looked at other girls, especially younger ones. I thought suddenly hit me however. Oh God, not Tanya again. No, she's over you now. Well who is it then? I'm not going to tell you. But the thing is Steve, I don't mind us carrying on kissing and stuff, as long as you know I'm not going to finish with John, and as long as you let this other girl have a chance as well. Well I can't promise that without knowing who she is. I carried on thinking. Not in our year, that probably meant it was some friend of Tanya's. There were four or five girls her age that hung around with her. It must be one of them. Promise me that you'll at least give her a chance, Anita went on. Surely you can do that. I thought about this proposition. I could carry on kissing Anita on the understanding that if some other girl who fancied me wanted to kiss me as well, I wouldn't stand in her way. Well, I suppose so, I said. It's a bit unfair when I don't know who she is, but I suppose I can agree to that. Good. Anita said with sudden brightness. She's really smitten with you, and she'd be really cross with me if she knew you and I were, well, better friends than we used to be, especially since she confided in me as well. She smiled at me, and I assumed the matter was settled. We'll just carry on like that for the time being and see how things go, she announced. Our eyes met, and we both smiled. I thought about kissing her there and then, but Anita threw a sideways glance at the old man on the other bench to warn me off. Now come on girl, we've got some serious shopping to do, she suddenly announced, standing up. The next three hours was an interminable trek around the clothes shops of the city. We went into everyone at least once, and rummaged through rack after rack of clothes. Anita insisted that I try several things on, a bright red mini dress, a little black dress, and a leather skirt with a silver top to name but a few. The first time I was terrified of going into the communal changing rooms, but being a weekday, the shops were relatively quiet, and no one seemed to pay me the slightest attention. Anita too tried a number of outfits on, and it occurred to me that for the first time since I had agreed to be a girl for the contest, she, if only briefly, was wearing girls' clothes as well. Eventually she said. Did you bring any money with you? A tenor, I replied, wondering where this was leading. Well that's not enough. Still, I can lend you some. Right, let's make our minds up about what we're going to buy for Saturday. I stared at her open-mouthed. In the trying on frenzy we had just gone through, I had lost sight of why we were actually there. I had enjoyed and even shared her enthusiasm as we had toured the shops, but it suddenly struck me that unless I intervened in some way I would find myself dressed as a girl and going to a disco on a girl's night out on Saturday, two days after the contest, and when practicing was no longer an issue. Anita, I'm not really sure about Saturday, I began. But why, she exclaimed. It was your idea anyway. I hesitated. I had actually intended to ask her on a date, not suggest a girl's night out as she had interpreted it. Well it'll be after the contest is finished, I began. 
I know, she responded. But that doesn't matter. Well it does a bit, I went on, I mean, I won't be needing to practice then will I? She looked at me, and after a while grinned. So you think that by Thursday you'll be the perfect girl do you? No, I responded. But I'll have nothing to practice for will I? She smiled again. No, but you could do it for its own sake. Its own sake? Yeah, it'll be good fun, just us girls going out and having a ball. But I'm a boy. I whispered insistently. Sometimes, she whispered, still smiling. And sometimes you're not. Let's just make Saturday one of the times that you're not. The excitement on her face at the prospect was all too evident. Her blue eyes flashed, and her smile widened. Come on Sarah, let's go. Before I could object any further, I was taken by the hand, and led back on a trip around the shops. On our first stop, Anita tried on a little black dress that she had already tried out that morning. After some time considering its merits and otherwise, she decided to buy it. That's me sorted, now let's think about you. Which did you like best out of all the things you've tried so far? I was taken aback by the question. Well, none of them really. Well that's okay, Anita responded brightly to me. We can always look around for something else. The prospect of that was even worse. I decided to offer some sort of opinion. Well if you pushed me, I began, I suppose the red dress was quite nice. Did you like that? Yes, it did look good on you. It's a bit short though. Well no worse than this skirt, I replied. She looked down at my legs. I suppose not. Come on then, let's go and try it on again. I was led back up the high street to the shop in question. Anita made a beeline to the right section of the store. I was amazed how she had managed to remember which of the many shops the dress was in, let alone whereabouts in the store it could be found. She selected out one in my size, and I was dispatched to the changing room to try it on. Anita stayed in the main body of the store, looking at other things. The changing room had two other people in there, girls in their twenties. Feeling more than a little self-conscious, I hung the dress on a hook and began to undo my skirt. The two other customers paid no attention to me, which was something of a relief, and just chatted to each other about how good or bad the things they were trying on looked. I turned my back on them to remove my blue sweater, carefully making sure I didn't disrupt my wig or my boobs. I managed this, and with some expertise after all my shopping that day, I slipped the dress on. Oh that looks nice, one of the girls said, making me jump. I turned and smiled at her. Where did you find that? It's out by the front of the shop, I replied honestly, trying not to blush. Over by the right. Thanks, the girl replied. I'm not sure I'd get away with anything that short though. Concern began to rise up in me, Anita had mentioned that it was short as well. Would I be making a fool of myself if I bought this dress and went to the Saturday disco in it? Do you think it's too short then? I asked nervously, moving over to join them looking in a full-length mirror. No, she exclaimed. It's just that you've got to have the legs for it. And the bum, added her friend. You've got such a nice neat little one, it's almost like a boy's. My heart rose into my mouth, and I blushed furiously, suddenly unable to move. Surely they had discovered my secret, and this was their way of letting me know. They obviously noticed my discomfort. It's a compliment, the second girl explained. I didn't mean to say you looked like a boy. No, her friend agreed. You look gorgeous. You really ought to get it. They returned to looking at their own clothes, and my moment of panic passed. I turned slowly from one side to the other, trying to decide whether the dress was too short. As far as I could see it was no shorter than the school skirt, 
or the denim one I had had on over the weekend. Looking at it, I thought that I'd better persuade Nikki and Anita that I should stick to tights with it, there was no doubt in my mind that if I wore stockings and suspenders with it, they would show. I stood back a little. The knee boots looked a bit odd with the dress, a bit clumpy, and inappropriate. I wondered what sort of shoes might look better. Please subscribe my channel for the next part. And visit my Patreon page for early access.